Welcome back to Exotic Car Play Place, everybody. Thanks for joining it again. And today we are going to discuss five key reasons you don't want to own a BMW 335i. That's right, after owning this car, I've already experienced my share of issues, pitfalls, problems, and a whole lot of other things. Let's get rolling into it right now. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. And so the first reason you may not want an early BMW 335i with the N54 engine happens to come if you're not a do-it-yourselfer, this car can literally break the bank. With a whole host and plethora of coolant leaks, hoses in the top, hoses in the bottom, radiators that split, lots of plastic parts that will allow this car eventually to leak antifreeze. Wastegates that rattle, vano solenoids that fail, high pressure fuel pumps that are guaranteed to fail. How about a boost charge pipe that actually is guaranteed to fail when you start putting boost through it because it's made of a cheap corrugated plastic. The list really does go on and on. I could talk all day for reasons, mechanical reasons why this car could be a problem for you. Being a do-it-yourselfer really is advantageous, number one, because a lot of times my experience is the dealers don't even want to touch these 335s anymore because A, they're old, and B, a lot of those mechanics are just as challenged as you or I would be in troubleshooting some of these problems. But should they actually take your car in, check it into the service department, you will drop to your knees when you find out the final tally of a repair on this car. Why? Because they have to charge through the teeth for their service labor rates. They have to charge through the teeth for their escalated parts prices. They have to pay for those fancy bottles of water that you get in the concierge office. You have to pay for the multiple layers of staff that they have on board to try to satisfy the customers. After all, all that glitzy shine and those fancy polished up tile floors, fancy bathrooms and free coffees and magazines and newspapers all comes at a cost to you, the customer. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer, this is easily solved. You just have to learn how to use sites like eBay, FCP Euro. Now, I'm not giving them a plug, but they are a great site that allows you to buy the parts for a fraction of what the dealer's going to charge you. And most of them are factory jobber parts. So if you can get parts for half the price of what the dealer's charging you because you have the flexibility in buying them yourself and you save the labor rate, the price of ownership drops dramatically off. But if you can't and you're not willing to work on these cars yourself, Forget about it, they will break your bank. Another reason what might deter you from owning a BMW 335 is the fact that virtually all new BMWs today are equipped with run flat tires. That's right, they're tires that are equipped to allow you to run the car continuously up to 50 miles per hour for 50 miles after you get a flat. It allows you to potentially get safely home. Seems like a great idea, right? Wrong. Wait until you get the bill and you've got to replace a new set of tires a double or triple a cost to add an extra layer of complexity most shops tire shops will not repair a run flat tire for fear of a compromised integrity of the run flat system dealers certainly won't and many tire shops will avoid it as well another problem with these run flats is if you have a flat tire and there's less than 70 percent left of tread on that tire often the dealer or the tire shops make you replace all four tires if you have an all-wheel drive or an x-drive vehicle because they say all the systems have to work together and they have to be balanced equally. If you replace one tire, that throws the balance out and potentially could wreck transmissions, differentials, and the lot. But even if you get a flat tire with a pair, you're still having to change out two, which ultimately is the cost of a full set of normally non-run flat tires. So all of this can be avoided as well. Replace those with their same size of tire in non-run flat. That just means you have to buy a little spare jack, throw that in your trunk, and a spare tire. Now, not a lot of people want to do that, but those that do, and they're willing to run the non-run flat tires, that's the way to go. As well, it also increases performance, rolling resistance is decreased. It's all a win-win going non-run flat. Another reason you may not want to buy a 335, and actually many BMWs, is the fact that they do not have a mechanical dipstick anymore to check your oil. That's right, they're all electronic dipsticks. That means you have to activate a little push button on the stock, you have to wait a certain amount of time, and then it comes up on the dash. Well, that all sounds well and easy, doesn't it? Means you don't have to get your hands dirty. Wrong again. Sorry, the problem with that is, A, it doesn't work right away, so the car has to be warmed up. You have to typically drive at least 10 to 20 miles before it registers, and not only that, Old school style mechanics prefer to be able to pull the oil out, get a sniff so you know whether there's frothing, or you've got blow by, maybe coolant in your oil, or even gasoline that would suggest overfueling. There's a lot of things that you can get from smelling the oil 
and it's not just about checking the oil level. And the fourth reason why you do not want to buy a 335 is more specific to this N54 car is because it's turbocharged and the whole package and engineering is very condensed. That's right, lift the hood of one of these beautiful 335s and you will behold the mass amount of equipment that's tucked away under that hood. So if you want to do any maintenance yourself or troubleshooting or checking for leaks or problem areas or replacing a simple part, Unfortunately, it usually means that you have to remove a whole lot of parts. For example, underneath, you've got to go underneath, remove 20, 30 screws to remove those pans, and then you have access to which it's still difficult to replace anything because everything else is still packaged into a subframe and it is very difficult to see anything. You go to the top of the engine, you've got shrouds and air boxes, you've got other plastic hardware fan shrouds, you've also got that bulkhead that has to be removed. If you need to do any top end engine stuff, you need to pull that whole bulkhead assembly away from the bottom of the windshield. You also need to potentially pull up that plastic hardware that's bolted down, essentially valve cover gaskets, going to expose injectors, going to expose all of that other hardware that's on top of the engine. Lots of plastic to remove before you even see any parts. That in itself is a painful situation. Again. Turbos, twin turbos, yes, packaged on the passenger side of the car. Good luck in getting it to them. You pretty much have to remove subframe, support the engine by the chassis. You have to remove everything from the top, everything from the bottom. It is a massive job in that 10 to 12 hour job to replace or even access your turbos adequately. It is nastily packaged and as, as a result, you may want to stay away from this. And the fifth reason you may want to stay away from a BMW 335, and again, I hesitate to say this affects many BMWs of this generation, which would be the E90, E92, and any other BMWs, would be the use of certain plastics on the interior of the car. It doesn't take very long to discover that some of the soft touch plastics, not all of the plastics, mind you, but on certain door handles, on certain steering wheel parts, you'll notice it starts to peel away. It looks great when it's new because it's a low shine matte finish, looks great, feels really wonderful when it's new, but it starts to bubble and peel away from the oils on your skin. Even sunlight, anything that really touches it outside of just leaving it preserved will typically wear it away and it peels away, bubbles, and then you wind up having to rip it all off and it looks like crap. Now, it's too bad BMW went to that, Fortunately, in later versions, later cars, they eventually got away with that particular finish, but that is a problem and one reason that you may want to hesitate in purchasing one of these 335s. Thanks again, everybody, for sticking around. Be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as notifications bell. That's going to make sure you get lined up and you don't miss the next great video about the five reasons that you really absolutely have to own this car. In essence, it really is a spectacular machine of great value. But you're going to want to click on there. Hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you on the flip side. See you then. Bye-bye.